Are you old and stiff? Well, you don't have to be old and stiff forever. We can work on some practices that can make us more dynamic. And if you don't have the ability to really uh, have a lot of opportunities to play particular different sports, because it would be great if we went out and chucked a football around, if we threw a softball around, we played some golf, some tennis, and we did a bunch of different stuff. But as we get older, sometimes those opportunities become few and far between. And then also, sometimes we're in pain and we don't love all this different stuff the same way we did as a kid. But what's rare for adults is to play. And if you play, you can get some really great benefits from it. I just wanted to show you something really quick with the football here, is that a lot of times when we're thinking about someone throwing a football or someone throwing a pitch, we're mainly just thinking of the, of the one arm, right? We're thinking of the one arm and we know better. We know that the hips are involved. We know the feet are involved. We know there's a lot of stuff involved, but we don't really think about too much about the other arm or the other shoulder and what that other uh, piece does. And so when you go to throw a football, and I'm stiff as could be, especially through here, so you're not gonna see me be able to really rip a football very well these days, but hopefully maybe I can get myself to a point where I can chuck it around pretty good again. But anyway, what happens is you get a shoulder low and a shoulder high. So this shoulder will go low, this shoulder will go high, and then someone's gonna release and the reverse is gonna happen. So we have a low shoulder, high shoulder, low shoulder, high shoulder. When we think about Mike Tyson throwing those dynamic, crazy hooks that he was throwing back in the day, again, it would be low shoulder, wind up, wind up the hip, and then boom, release to the other side. So when we throw a football, we don't really think too much, but that other arm is very much involved. And you see you know, Tom Brady, Mahomes, all these guys, they kind of locate the receiver with the one arm, they push that one out, and then they throw. And those guys even kind of do different things with their arm when they throw. You'll see Brady kind of does this flick back. But anyway, the point in bringing that up has nothing to do with really chucking around a football. It has to do with learning how to instill some movements that maybe some of us have lost. I unfortunately, I want to point something out really quick. It's not necessarily lifting that makes you lose these abilities. It's the discontinuation of these movements that ultimately leads to you losing these abilities. So if I would have done some of my athletics and some of my sports simultaneously with some of my powerlifting, I would have been able to keep some of the athleticism that I had when I was younger. Maybe I would have lost some of it, but I'd be able to keep some of it. Anyway, the idea of rope flow is just to get the shoulders to do this, so that way that the spine starts to move. And I still am stuck. I don't move my spine the way I would like, but I'm working on it and through the rope, I can use the rope to assist. And as I go here, to like the side, you know, I could stay in this kind of tight zone here and do this, but I can also rotate my shoulders all the way to this wall here. I can even look at my shoulder and try to drive my shoulder back. And there's so many different movements we can do with this. We can have the arms way out here. As we're doing this, we can have the hands in closer. My buddy Insema just recently shot a video on this. You guys should check it out. It's doing pretty well on YouTube. Go and check that out where he talks a lot about rope flow and where to get these ropes and everything. I think his website is Stronger Human. And I recently have advised a couple of my coaching friends to get into some of this and to check some of this out. And my wife has a group of friends that she trains a couple times a week and I'm gonna buy some ropes for them as well. I think this has tremendous utility. And look, this is just play. Like you might think that I'm doing this a real particular way, but this can be done real casual. We don't do enough exercise, in my opinion, with casual breathing. A lot of the exercise we do is like, right? This can be done relaxed. I can take my arms high. I can take my arms low. I can pull explosively if I want. Maybe you're a jujitsu guy and you're thinking about, you know, pulling someone's gi, pulling them closer to you, whatever it might be. But we really want to make sure that we're really massaging the body. This is restorative work. This is recovery. Louis Simmons would have loved a movement like this 
because he always viewed the sled as restoration. The sled work that we did at Westside was restorative. You could kind of walk lower, you can try to squat down, it might start to look a little funky. But just like with play as a kid, you don't worry about looking funky, right? We can kind of pretend we're fencing. You can pretend you're fighting, get in a fighting stance, keep that hand up, sneak in some jabs. You can do some of the WEC stuff where you go head over foot, head over foot, head over foot, head over foot, head over foot. Don't get caught in the middle. Get a lot of side bending in there, a lot of movement. You can also start to get the rope to hum and make some noise. You can just walk with this. I can easily take this on a walk. When I don't feel like messing with it, put it there. Feel like using it again, grab a hold of it. Do some shoulder work, shoulder stability, forward, backwards, backwards walks, backwards talks, uh, upward, a little bull riding. This is amazing for the shoulder. Take the whole arm and just let it swing and just try not to have any slack in the rope. You can kind of look at the rope a bit. But a big reason why we lose so much of our mobility is we lose a lot of mobility through this region. We lose a lot of mobility through kind of our guts. And if you can get that arm to start get some good ranges of motion again, if you can keep the, so as you're rotating this around, you want it to be able to go fluently. But there's a lot of different ways you can do this. You can kind of have your body go with the rope. And if I was out here doing this without the rope, <laughs> I would be dancing, which would feel super awkward to me. I don't want to dance, but I want to move and I want to be able to have good movement patterns. And so you can really play with this a lot though. See, I have this a different way now. And sometimes this gets a little crazy. You might get whacked or smacked with the rope here and there, but it's just a teaching tool. But the more that you rotate, the easier it should be to not have the rope hit you. And you can really practice kind of moving in some different planes and trying to stay steady, steady or tight or loosen up certain muscles. But all these muscles, David Wex talks about these quadrants. You got you know, in the front, you got two quadrants to help protect the spine. In the back, we also have two quadrants back here. And we want to try to keep those, whoops, we try to keep those, keep those moving, flowing and moving. You also get a lot of wrist work with this. And you may have seen some other influencers doing a lot more tricky stuff with this. Like they go behind the back and stuff. But for me, you know, just having my arms behind my back is still kind of tough. So I'm still working on some of that. There's a lot of range of motion stuff I need to work on. This is obviously a heavier rope. So we got a lighter rope. We got a heavier rope. Now this guy, we get that wrist going. Plus, you get the benefits of being outside. This is something you could obviously do inside, but I really prefer to do it out. We also can stay on the same side and try to figure out how to manage our body weight this way. We can do it underneath, which sometimes can feel harder or stranger or more difficult. Again, occasionally you will whack yourself with this thing.
whether you're playing golf, tennis, pickleball, whatever it is that you're doing, it's going to take some good motion of the spine. And this is a nice thing to be able to keep in your repertoire. What you'll also find is that this can be an amazing workout. So this kind of looks like I'm just kind of messing around with this rope, right? But I've been doing 10 to 15 minutes of this every single day. When I was traveling recently to New Jersey and Boston, I brought these ropes with me. Really easy movement to do. Very easy to convince yourself to do a couple minutes of it. Very easy to take on a walk. Very easy to find some space and some room to be able to do it. These ropes are not inexpensive, but it's like, how many of them do you need? You need like one or two, and you don't need to buy them again. So, a lot of times people tend to complain about the price of stuff. You can go to Home Depot and try to figure this out, but you're not gonna get the same quality. Really move those wrists around, move those elbows around, elbow high, elbow low, elbow high, elbow low. Back and forth, back and forth. Move the feet around. Get into like a wide stance. Try it this way. Get into a closer stance, one foot in front of the other. This should be a, something that you can practice a lot of nasal breathing with. It's also gonna improve your grip tremendously. And again, if you wanna work, you're someone that's got a whacked out shoulder, my left shoulder, a little compromised with range of motion. I can just start out doing this. Then I can see, okay, get a couple in a row. There, here we go. Try to really let the rope take your arm in a particular direction. Now we go forward. Forward's a little harder for me. I should probably be better off with the lighter rope for this one. You can see how the rope starts to go weird directions, right? But this is only limited to your mind. You can do whatever the hell you want with this forward. Backwards, underneath, boom, boom. Get these little uppercuts going. So that's rope flow. There's your intro to it. You can see a lot more people doing this coming up because I believe that this is a very effective practice and I think that this is something that's not just gonna come and go. I think that this is here to stay. You can see more athletes doing it. I, I'll, I'll bet you it won't be long before you see this on the sidelines of some football games. Like, why wouldn't they use this? Somebody has a back or a rib injury, injury. You see that in football all the time. People's ribs getting all messed up. It's a good way to massage the ribs. Get the ribs moving. Get the person moving. Get them flowing. Get them doing some rotational work. Very peaceful, very calm. I would suggest doing this occasionally to some music and occasionally without music. Just get into your mind. No noise. Just the, your own flow, your own breathing. That's Rope Flow from Mark Smelly Bell. If you want to pick these up, I'll put a link right here. Strength is never weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch you guys later.